OK, so um, a lot of you use PyCharm. I have been using Idle for way too many years, probably longer than you've been alive. Um, so, uh, so I just never switched to PyCharm. Um, so it doesn't matter because the language is the same, right? And I'm going to just be writing on the board. So whatever, whatever uh, environment you prefer is perfectly fine. Um, every time I see PyCharm, I think oh, I should switch to and start using that. Uh, and then I immediately forget about it and continue with idle. Um, but it doesn't matter because I'm just going to write on the board um, in, you know, it's a file. Whatever uh, environment you like is, is fine. There's others as well, other than those two. Um, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Definitely pros and cons of both of them. Uh, so whatever, again, whatever you like to do. Um, occasionally, I will say, let's try something in the shell. And so when we talk about trying something in the shell, I will write it like that just to indicate that we're at the prompt in the shell. Uh, that's the, I, uh, so that's just the distinction. If I don't have that, we're just in a file. If I do have that, um, then you know, OK, we're doing something in the shell. That's just to experiment with something and say, hey, what's going on here? What happens um, in, <coughs> excuse me, in this, uh, you know, with this bit of, of code? All right, so. Um, Let's open a file, and we're going to have some things that we will always do uh, at the, the top of, of every file. So um, we'll make a, we'll have a comment with your name. You would think that um, I would never see those actual words in a file, but I don't know how many times over the years that the very first program that gets turned in actually says your name. Uh, anyway, don't do that, right? Um, put your actual name in there. Um, the assignment or the topic, so in our case, uh, usually this is going to be you know, things like lab number one, lab number two, something like that, but in, um, in other situations, Maybe if it's part of a bigger lab, you just indicate what part of the lab it is, something, uh, something there, just a, a really short description. This is for our purposes in the class, but it's also then beneficial to you uh, in terms of being able to easily look back and say, okay, what is this for? Uh, if, and, and you see that right away. Um, we'll put, now you're going to do version control kinds of things in 1802, where you have, especially when you have multiple people working on something. But for the date, um, you might keep track of like when you've made changes. But but primarily for our purpose, when you finished it, right? So when you when you update, you, this is a date that shows you the, the last uh, edits or whatever for for the file. Um, and then we're going to have a fourth line where you put in um, any kind of if you happen to use any outside references. Now, our purposes are not to look things up, right? Our purpose is to improve your skills. And the way you improve your skills is by practice and work. But there are some times when you're like, ah, I don't know the name of a, of a method that does this or something. And so you look something up. Well, you just indicate it. If you talk to each other, now you don't share code with each other. Uh, the code that you write, the only people who should see it would be you, me, and possibly the SI. But you, w the point isn't to be sharing actual code. But you can talk about ideas. It's like, how, you know, how are we going to design this? What are we going to do here? Um, and if you talk to other people about it, let's cite the sources, right? So you just include that uh, in, in this, at this point. Um, if you cite your sources, um, then that's OK. But if you don't cite your sources, and it becomes obvious that you were using other sources, well, I mean, that's, that's plagiarism. That's cheating. Um, that's not a good thing. Now, uh, again, the main thing is, yeah, everything we're going to do has already been done. So the point isn't to get it done. The point is for is the process right, of going through that and figuring out how to get from this point to that point. Improve your skills, improve. Uh, your way of thinking about things so that when you then do get to things that haven't been done before, that you can be the one that is 
providing the solutions that other people are coming to to say, how, 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 how do you do this thing? Oh, okay, that's how you do it. Um, so, um, so those will be at the top of all of the um, of all of our files that we turn in, right? Okay. Um, now let's go ahead then, and we're going to build a fraction class. We just want to build uh, the the tools to be able to represent a fraction, and to be able then to do the things that you would do with fractions. What do you do with fractions? You add, subtract, multiply. Uh, you figure out what the numerical value of the fraction is, right? You, okay, so we're going to go through some of those pieces uh, now. All right, so what's the first thing that happens then uh, in the actual part of the, uh, of the file here um, is we're going to create a class. And it's, we're going to call the class fraction. Now, um, so that first line looks like this. We're going to later, okay, so we're going to later change what's in the parentheses. Um, right now, what this says is that the fraction class that we're creating takes on all of the built-in features that Python associates with any other object. Um, so in your 1801, how many of you did anything with inheritance? Okay, there's a, um, all right, so we're going to not do anything right now, but in a very, uh, very, very soon. Um, next week we'll do some Pygame stuff. The following lab after that, um, when we start building our vector class, we will build a general tool, and then we will build specific things that work only in two dimensions and certain things that work only in three dimensions. And so if you have a general tool and then specifics, you want the specific case to be able to inherit everything the general thing can do and then add on the specifics. And so we will have this inheritance idea. And we'll change what's in there, which will have an effect on that. We'll, we'll see all that later. Um, so if you did some inheritance stuff, fine. And if you didn't, that's fine too. Um, all right, so our, our, our class is called Fraction. Uh, we want to follow, so, so when, when Guido Van Rossum created Python, I guess I said this really, I think his, his name is V-A-N, but he's Dutch, so uh, in Dutch I think that's pronounced fun. Um, and so he had certain ideas of how he liked things to be. And one of the things that happens in sort of, if you read the standards, read the requirements, or the description, not requirements, but you read the description in Python, of how variables are named. There are certain rules that are in place. Right? For instance, you can't start with a digit. Um, there, are, there are some, you can't use any special characters other than the underscore. Right? There, are, there are some specific rules that have to be in place. Uh, but then there are just other naming conventions. And the convention um, that the Python standards call for is snake casing. So lowercase letters, a word, underscore, the next word if you have a multi-word, so if you have more than another underscore, and, and so on. Uh, so we'll follow that convention. Uh, there are very few cases where you capitalize things, and the name of a class is one of those. So a capitalized thing, uh, in, in this case, when you see that, that should make you think immediately, this is a class. Um, if you see something in all caps, that's a very rare situation, but there are situations where that's allowed. All caps corresponds usually to like a global variable. Uh, and we'll deal with that sometimes. We've seen it uh, in some things in Pygame, and you will do it uh, in certain other situations. It's something that, that it's a variable that lots of things uh, are, are, are looking at and using. Uh, otherwise, we won't do you know, camel casing or other, other choices of, uh, we'll just follow the standards, and that way it kind of gives our, builds our, our own particular um, programming skills uh, to be able to, to be easily read, right? Everyone can, can easily read certain things. Um, we'll also make sure we do things like, you know, proper spacing around, around equal signs and that kind of thing, right? Make things readable. Uh, have enough white space, uh, but not, not necessarily too much. You know, like right there, we should have a, a white space line, right? Because this stuff is all together and then this is different, so we separate that. Um, uh, so we want, we'll, you know, Python forces some things, you know, with the tabbing and so on, it forces some good programming 
um, um, practices, uh, but then other things we just want to make sure that we're that we're following along. Um, the practices that Python uh, enforces, like with a correct, you know, nice tabbing, uh, if you use those in C next year, your C programs are easier to read. Easier to read. If you don't, I mean, it doesn't break, but certainly a good habit to get into, uh, especially when you're trying to um, you know, debug something at four in the morning after you've been working on it for for 45 straight hours. Um, you know, it's really good if you can see where things are instead of trying to trying to sort it out. So uh, we'll just try to to continue what you've done in 1801 uh, with with keeping up the good good practices. Um, all right, so we are going to create this fraction class. We're going to, to do all the framework of what happens in a fraction. So what do we do uh, with, a, with a class? What's the first thing we have to, we have to do? Initialize it. Yeah, we have to initialize it. We have to construct, we have to build the constructor, right? And so to do this, we have a, a method for creating uh, an, an instance of the class. So what is a class? I mean, the class basically contains uh, the, the structure for the, an element with its content and all the methods that are available, all the functions that, that you can use um, for this. So to initialize, is this method underscore, underscore, I-N-I-T, Underscore, underscore, right? So the, so the initialization, the constructor. What do we have? This is this function for, for, for building the pieces. What do we have? We always have in the initializer a parameter of self. But a fraction, what do you have for in a fraction? If you wanted to describe a fraction, what would you have to tell me? Or what would I have to tell you if I wanted you to write down a fraction? Uh, how many numbers? At least two. At least two? Yeah. Or, or exactly two. Right? To write down a fraction, what do you need? You need a numerator and a denominator. Right? So we need two numbers. And to be an actual fraction, we need those numbers to be what kind of numbers? Like, yeah, integers, right? They could be negative, but we need them to be integers. And what else do we need? The denominator can't be zero. The, the can't be zero right? So we have some rules about these numbers. But what do we have? We're going to have two numbers. And so uh, when we start to initialize this fraction, or the, the constructor here is going to have Self refers to the one that we're creating, right? A, a particular instance that we're creating. And then we have a numerator and a denominator. But there's nothing yet that tells anything that this is the numerator and this is the denominator, right? This is just, um, this is just the pieces we have. All right. Now, uh, in your 1801, did you talk about doc strings? OK, I mean, it's fine. Uh, we're going to definitely uh, incorporate doc strings in every case. And later, we're going to see exactly why we do that. Uh, if you've ever used a help function in Python, you get a lot of information about, about a class or about a, a, an object and its methods that are available and so on. All of that comes from the doc string. So you can access a doc string from outside. And so you can, you can get some help, uh, or you can build help files yourself, um, or you know, how-to guides uh, based on, on what the doc string includes. Um, so if you have well-written doc strings and well-thought-out programs, you don't need any comments, right? other than like that stuff, right? the kind of things that aren't really part of the program itself. Um, so the doc string is going to tell all of the pieces. So uh, we're, we're, we're going to edit and add to and modify what happens with, the, um, uh, with what we include in the, in the doc string. But, but one thing that we want to think about, so we have three quotes, right? That's the start of, so this parameter A that we have, 
What does A represent? What is A? An it's an integer that represents the numerator. Okay? I mean, if we were to see something like, just in writing somewhere, if we were to see something like that, what would we think? We would think 3 fourths probably, right? Almost everyone would think 3 fourths. Now, some people might think of it as an ordered pair with x and y and think of like slope with change in y over change. And they might think of that in reverse order with that number being on, on top. But most people, when they would look at this, would think, oh, fraction 3 4 means 3 fourths. So we're going to go with that, right? We'll, we'll use that idea. All right, so parameter A is an integer. that represents the numerator. Parameter B. What has to be true about B? Uh, Actually, let's let, let's let Connor answer this one. OK, so this is an integer that's not 0 that represents so this is the denominator. Now, we're doing a lot of extra writing right now. And in this particular case, OK, the fraction class is pretty obvious, maybe. So we wouldn't necessarily, uh, I mean, we're not, we're not adding anything or saving anything. But in, in more complicated scenarios, we're describing the information. We're describing what the thing is and how to use it. If we had a, uh, and the, the constructor doesn't do this, but if we had something that we were returning, we would also include return and describe what it returns, right? the kind of thing that gets returned. And that way, when we want to use it, uh, even if you've never used it before, you can look at the doc string, know exactly how to use the, the tools uh, in this particular uh, situation. All right, so in this case, that's all we have. Uh, this is the constructor. Right? We, might, we might include that, right? We might say that. But, but that's not uh, uh, I mean, the purpose of the doc string is to say, here's what's coming in. Here's what it's doing. Here's what's coming out, right? All right. So we want to, to be able to create a fraction. But when we initialize or construct this thing, we want to make sure that it follows these rules, that the a and the b that we have given really are integers or non-zero integers. So we need to check these things, right? OK. So before we say, all right, this is all good, we want to make sure that it really is good. So we want to check to see if A and B really are integers before we start doing something. Because what happens if we were to let something get through that wasn't really an integer, and then later we're trying to add something together, and now we have something that you can't even add to this other thing? Right, then the whole thing breaks. So if we can check for errors every time the user does something, then we can make sure that those errors didn't happen later when it matters. Right? When we're doing a calculation later, we don't have to worry about, oh, did they mess up somewhere when they entered some data? No, because if they entered the data and messed up, we told them then. And they had to fix it before it ever got to this point. All right, so let's think about it. How do we check to see uh, if A is an integer? Well, OK. Um, so you could, could try. But what if you try to convert something to an integer that, that can't be converted to an integer? So if you do like int 4.0, or int 4.7, or int, what if you do int of your name as a string? You try int of your name as a string. 
Python's going to break, right? You know, so we want to avoid the breaking or only break when we want it to break. So, so we, we can check the type to see if the type is an int. Uh, a lot of you probably haven't seen this before. Let's go to the show. Um, so if you're in PyCharm, what, you have the console, I think you can click. Um, uh, otherwise, in idle, you can go over to the shell. So we're, at the, we're in the shell. Um, how many of you, I know two of you have, how many of you have ever seen is instance? <laughs> let's, try, let's type is instance and then do, say, four comma int. In the shell. So this is away from this. This is just like experimentation purposes. So are you in PyCharm or? Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you have the console button? I think you can. You don't even need to do that. It's at the bottom. It's at the very bottom of the screen. What happens if you do is instance four comma int and hit enter? True. It's true. So what does it say? It says four is an instance of, so it, the type is four, right? It belongs to that, that class of, of objects. Um, what if we change this to 4.0? Change the four to 4.0, we get false. Because what is 4.0? It's a float. So what if we did this? Is instance 4.0 and then in parentheses put int or float. It says float. If you can't tell. So what what do you before you before you do it, what do you think is going to happen here? It's going to check to see if it's an int or a float. Right? So it'll check int, and if it, if it is an int, it'll say true, and it'll stop. But if it's not, it'll go to the next one. So let's try that. Is instance 4.0 comma int comma float? And it is true. It's not an int, but it is a float, so it's in the right category. Right? So what's here is the value that we're checking, and what's here is, can be a sequence, a tuple in this case, of, of things that are possibilities. Let's go back now and put quotes around the 4.0. That's what we expect, right? 4.0 as a string is not an int or a float, so it checks both of them and says, oh, no, neither of these. It's false. OK, so what can we do? We, we're going to use this a lot in our error, error handling. right? We're looking to see, are things in the right, are they the right data type? Before you mess up, before you get too far in, we back off and make sure that everything is OK. Kyle, is there a question? It's, what, it's the word is and the word instance all together. All right, so what do we want to do? We want to check to see if we have A and B that are given, if they satisfy the right pieces, right? So what do we have to have? We have to check to see is A an integer, and we have to check to see whether B is an integer. 
if a and b are not integers, or if either are not integers, what do we what do we do? Yeah, throw it back to the user. Say no, this is this is inappropriate, right? So here's what we can do. When would you throw it back to the user? You throw it back to the user if it's not an integer. So how would we do that? Yeah, so let's back here in our shell, let's try this. Not is instance. I misspelled that. Don't don't type that. I think I spelled it correctly. For int. What happens if you do not is instance for the string for comma int? What do you get? You get true, right? So this part is false, so not that is true. So in this case, what do we want to look for? We want to look for if not is instance a comma int. We're going to yell at them. We're going to yell at the user if they give us something that's not an int there. Actually, maybe not, right? If they give us a, a four as a string, Maybe we want to try to convert it, but let's not worry about that right now. Right? We could check to see if we can convert it first. How do you check to see if you can convert something? Do you know? Well, int a is going to try to convert that, and if it can't be, that will break. Um, you can do a try except, uh, you can do it a different way. But there's also, has anyone ever seen is digit? Again, I know two of you have. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about that later, right? There, there's, a, there's a method um, with a string that we can do of is digit to see if something can be converted to an int before you try. Uh, but anyway, right now all we care about is is the thing an int? And if it's not, we're going to yell. But it's also not just A, but it's also B, right? So how do we, what do we do for, for B? Yeah, we say or here, because if either one or both of these are a problem, right? We want to, to kick this out. So not is instance So what do we want to do if one of these things is not an integer? We want to tell the user that they messed up, right? And what we want to do here is we're not prompting the user at this point for something, so we don't have like input. We just want to tell the user that they messed up and they can't do that. So we want to yell at them the way Python yells, in all red, right? So what do we do? We're going to raise an error. Now, what kind of error is this? If we're expecting an int and they give us something that's not an int, what have they done? They've given us something that is the wrong data type, right? They've given us something that's the wrong data type. So the error that we're raising is a type error. And this is one of those other rare instances where things are capitalized. The T and the E, well, the T and one of the E's um, in type error is capitalized. And what do we do here? We give a message back. We give a message back that says, something like this, right? Some, some useful information. The, the values A and B must be integers, or some, something useful, right? A, a, a message, an error that says there's a problem here. I 
Make sense? Okay. Now, um, actually, at this point, we can we can well no let's let's go a little bit further. Um, let's build the whole thing and then we'll experiment with it a little bit. What else do we want to check? Now that if we got past this point, what does that mean? They're both integers, right? If you get past that, because what raise does is it's like a return. It stops right there, it gives that back and stops. So if you get past this, that means that both A and B were integers. So what else do we have to check now? Yeah, if B is 0, then there's a problem, right? So if B is 0, then we need to raise a new error. How do you, what, do we, what do we do here? How do you see if, if B is 0? We could do it this way. I think we could actually just use the word is if you, if you wanted to. Uh, don't want to, right? We're comparing numbers. We want to use it this way, right? This is how you check to see if something is actually 0. If it is 0, what do we want to do? We want to raise an error. What kind of error do you think this is? Is this a type error? So it's not a type error because it's the, it's the right type, right? It's an int. And so what we use in that case is it's a value, right? So it's a value error. And the end result is going to be the same. Python's going to yell, but it's beneficial to make sure that you have you know, type errors and value errors and so on separated because later when we write more complicated uh, uh, programs, the kind of error that happened might determine what our response to it is going to be. Right? If somebody gave, or if we had a type error, the way we respond to a type error would be different than the way we respond to, say, a value error. If there's a value error where something has been found to be zero that's not allowed to be zero, then maybe we pretend like it's not zero, turn it into some other number. But you can't do that if it's a type error, because if it's a type error, there's something else going on. Right? So we will, um, we want to be. Not everything, don't raise the same type of error for every, every kind of error, right? Raise an appropriate type of error. So what do you say here? Um, you know, maybe you say the denominator cannot be 0. Yell at them, right? All this is going to come back in red, so that's, that's good. You know, if somebody makes the mistake, we're going to see it. All right. Now, other than all of this, what happens with that A and B? What do we say those A and B are supposed to represent? Well, they are integers. What are they supposed to represent? Numerator and denominator. So we can create um, a, a value, right, a variable, that makes that specifies that these numbers that were given to us are actually the numerator and the denominator. So we can do something like this, self dot, let's create a variable, uh, maybe I'm not going to write out the whole word numer, maybe numerator, maybe I'll just write out the first part of it, right? And what is this? A. That's A. So whatever number was given to us, it's an appropriate number now because we've gone through past all the checks, it's an appropriate number, and we're going to call that the numerator. And then we could do the same thing with self dot like denom, and that would be b. All right, so let's put that in there as well. All right, this is a constructor for an instance. An instance of the of the fraction class is going to be created by here's some data. Does the data satisfy the rules? And if so, then here's what we have. Here are the pieces in place. All right, and it, so let, let's see what happens. Uh, so back in the shell, let's say x is fraction 3, 4 again. Type that and hit Enter.
What happened? Uh, Whatever. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. Well, okay. Um, yeah, if it's the same file, you don't. So, so you can do this. So if you have this, run it. Let's run it. All right, so, so run this. And there should be a place where you can then... Right, and you run, and now, now you don't. At the bottom of, of PyCharm, if you're using PyCharm, then you have a, a window where you can interact. Otherwise, in in idle, you have the shell that opens up. We, we have nothing to insert. No, you don't. You 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 do it right there. You actually put in those numbers, three and four. I'm assuming you're not able to write that down. Do you not have? If you're using Python, mm -hmm. just do this stuff down below, outside of the class, and back of this line. So just do it out of that. Just do it in the same file, but just down below. Right here. Yeah. So what happens if you run that? if you run it? Does anything happen? Did something happen? Well, let's see. Technically, All right, we didn't tell it to print anything, right? We told it to create something. So let's see if it did. So what if we print Say x dot if you print that, what do you get? You get three, right? So it did something. It kept that information. It has it, saved it somewhere. What if we print x? Yeah, it prints what it is, which is a fraction, right? Tells you that it's an object, a fraction object, at, and then there's a, a hex value there. What is that? Yeah, that's the memory location where this thing is stored. So you know it's there. And we can access the numerator and the denominator, but it doesn't show up in any kind of nice way for us, right? If you try to print it, it tells you what it is and where it is, but it doesn't tell you, you know, it tells you what kind of thing it, thing it is and where it is, but it doesn't tell you the information. If you printed x, what would you really want to have happen if you had this fraction 3, comma 4? You'd want it to be something like maybe that? If you said fraction, right? You want to print it out like that. So that's what we want to see. But right now, if we print x, what do we see? We see what kind of thing it is, and where it lives in memory. Now, your hex, hex value is different for you than it is for anybody else because it's dependent on you know, whatever happened just now. It's not going to be the same memory location for everybody, right? But that, that just describes what's going on here. But what have we done? This constructor then will, when we call this, we, we call this constructor function not by using underscore, underscore, I-N-I-T, underscore, right? We use... We call it in this way. When we type in something like this, Python knows, oh, let's run this method. Let's see what's going on. 
right? And so what does it do? Builds the pieces, uh, saves them, and then we can start to do things with it. All right, so what do we want to do with it? Well, we see right now one thing we want to be able to do is to be able to print it out in a nice way. So how do we print this out in a nice way? Well, we are going to be on this level again, right? So we're inside the class, but we're with a new method. So this new method If we want to be able to print something, when we use print, yes? No, just keep it, because we're going to keep coming back to those same examples. So just keep it, but just put it down below, right? Keep pushing it down. Um, later, we'll have a different way to put like test stuff. Uh, it's actually in the lab, so when you look at the lab, uh, page one of the lab is the description, page two is like a test suite. Um, but you have to retype it yourself this time because it's in a PDF and you can't copy and paste without breaking all the spacing stuff. Uh, but there's a how to do with testing. Um, so you, yeah, you just put that down at the bottom. Um, all right, so when Python prints something, what can Python print? Python can print characters, right? And characters are strings. So everything that Python prints has been converted to a string before, right? Because that's what that's what's going on. So what do we need to be able to do? We want to convert our stuff to a string so that the print method or the print function can behave properly. And so what we do is we create a method here uh, that's inside our class that takes care of this. Again, the double underscore, you, when you see that, you usually think that means, OK, this is a method that's never actually called by name. It's doing something behind the scenes. I mean, you can just, I mean, it's not exactly what it means, but that's what you can, that's, that's how it behaves. So what do you have? Uh, we want to convert this to a string, and the method is called str. So well, I mean, it's, it's actually called underscore, underscore, str, underscore, underscore, right? Uh, but, but this particular method. Now, what do you have to give um, to this in order to do something with it, the only thing you have to give is the fraction itself. And so there's no extra parameters here, right? So this is just this particular thing. So what are we going to have? Again, our doc string. Uh, in this case, we could say something like um, converts an instance of the fraction class to do a string for printing. Right? That's, that's what it does. Um, so I'm going to save the space and just make a, a place for the doc string. You just, because there's not really an input and an, well, and there isn't. Actually, there is a return. Uh, we could say that. Um, return a formatted string representation um, of an instance of the fraction class. Right? So we want to describe what's happening there. But, uh, but there's no input to it. right? Other, I mean, this is a method that anytime we say print something, this method is going to be, is going to be called. All right, so let's think about it. If we had fraction. 3, 4, and we said print that, we want it to print like that. Do we have to do error handling at this point? Do we have to check for mistakes? No, because this is just on self, right? This, is, this thing has already been checked to make sure it's in the right kind of format. So we don't have to do any, any error handling at this point. 
Uh, we already took care of that in the constructor for, for this part. All right, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, so if we see fraction 3, comma 4, we want it to print out like that. What if we had given this as our input? We want it to look like that, right? What if we had given this? We still want it to look like that, don't we? What if we had given this? We want it, we want it to look like that. Right? So in these situations, we have these different things that we, we want to determine where the minus sign, if there are any, what happens in those cases. So we're going to have to look at each one of those individually. Um, but that is, um, we'll do part of it together and then part of it you get to do. All right? So just for this part, what do we do? Just for that part, we we're ignoring all of the other bits. We could return. We want to return a string, right? We want to return a formatted string that has the right information. So what kind of information does it have to have? Well, what is this number? So that is the numerator. And that is the denominator, right? So what can we do? We could return just a single formatted string. How many of you did string formatting like that? All right, let's, let's use string, some string formatting. This is, well, there are different ways we could do this, but this is a, uh, a Python way. If you do string formatting like this, you put an F in front of the first string symbol, and then anything in braces, it's going to look for, the, for a variable with that name, and it'll put the value in there. Now, we could do this other ways, too, right? We could create a string, and we could do string self.numer, and then we could do plus and then do plus string of self.denom. Or we could do it that way as well. Um, the formatting, same idea, right? Just, just speeds it up a bit for us. Now, the nice thing about the formatting for Python, yeah, okay, it's faster, but then when you go to C, you don't have that same exact option, so you have to go back to the other approach. So it's good to be able to switch back and forth and be able to do it in different ways for formatting. But this is just going to format... Um, so we'll just deal with the one situation right here. But what do you need to be able to do? You need to be able to account for the other cases as well. Right? So you're going you're gonna to add more into this, into this method. All right, so now we still have our x that we created. Um, And we said, let's print x. Now print x, and what do you get? So if you still had that stuff in place, you just run it again now. And what happens this time? Now it doesn't tell you some memory location. It tells you 3, 4. Let's change this. Instead of 3, 4, let's make it 3, 0. What if you do 3, 0? We get our value error. The value error that you wrote 
is the error that we get, right? Because Python looks at it, tries to create it, and says, oh no, b is 0, and so it gives back the value error that, that, we, that we put. What if you put 3 comma and put the 0 in quotes? We get the type error because it says, oh no, these both have to be integers, right? So we get that kind of, of error. Um, all right, so it never gets to the printing x portion because it breaks earlier, and we get back our error message. All right, so everything that you've ever printed in Python, somewhere there's a method like this that creates the right kind of form, except I guess strings because strings or done it in a different way. Uh, but everything else is there's something that converts it in the appropriate way. All right, so this is all kind of, st we still haven't done anything with a, with a fraction, right? Still not fractions, they're just symbols that we're moving around. So what happens if we um, had two fractions? We still have x. And let's say we have y, which is 1 half. What would we like to be able to do? We might like to be able to do something like, let's print x plus y. All right? We'd like to be able to add fractions. So how could we add fractions? Well, what do we need to be able to do? We need to be able to tell Python what to do with that plus sign when the two pieces are fractions. So we need to, if you do this right now, what happens? Right? Python says, I don't know what to do with that. All right, so let's tell Python what to do with that. We want to use the plus symbol. We want to overload that operator. We want to make plus mean what we want it to mean. And so to make plus mean what we want it to mean, we need a method. And we need a method that will be called in this way, right, when you actually want to use it. So when we name it, it's going to be one of these, one of these pieces. Now, what do you think you use here? We're trying to define what it means to add, and so it's add. All right. When you add two of these, what do you need? We need self. So we always need self. But we also need something else, right? Because you have to add two things. You have to add this thing and that thing. So we're going to have a self and other. You don't have to call them that, right? It doesn't have to be called other, uh, but something else. All right, so when we add, you have this is the thing that Python will look at and think of as being a, a member of this class. And because what happens? Python looks at this and says x. OK, what is x? x is a, a fraction. Then it looks at plus and says, oh, OK, wait a minute. We're calling this method. So it calls this method, and this thing is self. And then whatever comes next is other. And so Python will then apply whatever rules we say down here. All right, so what is our doc string going to say? Well, in this case, we are overloading the plus operator. And we're going to return what? We want to return a new fraction with the correct values, right? Now, 
Now, if you think about adding two fractions, does it have to be two fractions that you add? If I have a fraction, I could add another fraction to it, but what else could I add? And still be able to get a fraction at, at the end. I could add a fraction, or if we added an int right there, you still get a, a fraction as an answer, don't you? I mean, you should be able to. So we're going to have to think about what happens if this is an int also. But we'll not worry about that just yet. I'm going to erase that. But we're keeping, we're keeping that uh, down below because we want that to, to see what we get. Okay. All right. So let's just worry about fractions first. What do we want to have happen? Bef do we need to do any error handling or any error checking at this point? Well, let's see. If we're going to do x plus y, that means the user has typed that in, right? The user has created an x, and the user has created a y. And then the user is doing x plus y. So what if the user, again, said fraction, I don't know why I erased that, said fraction 3 comma 4, but then they said y was George. That's perfectly fine, right? y equals George is perfectly fine as far as Python's concerned because they didn't say anything about fraction. They didn't call our fraction class, so our error handling doesn't kick in. But when we get to x plus y, then we have a problem because we haven't checked how to add a, we're not creating how to add a fraction in a string. So what would we have to do right here? We want to check to make sure that other really is a fraction. So if is instance, How do you check to make sure that other really is a fraction? Well, you want to check to see if other is a fraction. So let's just check. See if it is because now we've created that data type. Fraction is now a type that is instance can use. So if other is a fraction, then we can we can do our, our, our work here. If other is not a fraction, we'll have an error message. Except we really want to fix it so if other is an int as well. But for right now, right? So for right now, we'll just look at, at the fraction situation. So if if other is a fraction. What do we want to do? I have a fraction a over b plus c over d. How do I add those? So what would it look like in terms of So we have to have a common denominator. So we have to do like BD. But then what happens? To make the common denominator BD, we have to multiply this top and bottom by D and this top and bottom by B before we can do that. So what do we have? AD plus BC over B times D. Right? So we have to get, now, this isn't in reduced form necessarily, but it's still a fraction. right? And it has a common denominator, and then we can add the pieces. Are we OK with that? All right, but what are A, B, C, and D here? Well, let's, I'm going to reuse A and B because, because those don't really have meaning. I'm going to use A. A is going to correspond to this thing right here. Maybe I should call them something else. But, but So what is the A that's over there is really what? Which numerator? The first one, which is self's numerator. 
So that A right there, because self is the one on the left, that's the way Python is thinking, it's from, from left to right. So self is the one on the left. So A is self's numerator. Then what do we want to multiply it by? Others denominator. Now this isn't necessary, but I'm going to put parentheses in there just to make it easier to, to follow. So that's the AD. And then what? Then we have to add BC to that. So what is B? B is self's denominator. And C? Other numerator, I ran out of space, but pretend. Is that okay? Now we need to create the denominator. What does the denominator look like? What's B times D? What is B? Self.denominator. And D is other dot denominator, or denom, right? Make sense? Then what are we going to do? Those are the values we want to send back. But what do we want to return? We don't want to return just the numbers. We want to return a fraction with those values. Make sense? So now we had 3 over 4 plus 1 over 2 created. And now, and we, and now and we still had to print x plus y. What happens if we do this now? We get, mm, should get 10 over 8 times, times. I think you probably have a plus right there, don't you? Yep. You know, if you have 11 over 8, then you have a plus where you need it at times. Make sense? All right, so what have we done? This method here tells Python what to do if it sees a fraction plus another fraction. But what do we need? We also need to have what happens if other is not a fraction. So what do you do in that case? Raise a type error. Except we might not raise a type error. We might have a, a, another else or another if, actually, like an elif. It says, well, if it's an int, if it's an int, what could we do? What if you had 3 fourths plus 2? Yeah, if we had 3 fourths plus 2, we could do this, but think of the other denominator as being 1. And so rewrite this portion. Or we could change the order. Uh, we, we can't call it other dot denom, though, because an int doesn't have a denominator, right? So what we could do is instead of like saying denom, well, denom, other dot denominator, in this case, if we had an int, we'd make that denominator, instead of using other dot denominator, just put the number one or just take that part out completely. And when we see other dot numerator, we would just put other in place. And we can make this work also with a and a fraction plus an integer. All right? We'll come back to that. So that's something that you get to work on. All right? Uh, so some extra piece. So, so uh, raise a type error, but not really, because we have a bit more. And your type error is something that's 
explanatory, right? We can only add fractions to, uh, to other fractions, or maybe if, we, if you put the int part in there, we can only add fractions and other fractions or fractions and integers. All right, so this is this, is this new for you, this kind of thing, overloading the operator like that? OK. Um, but you see what's happening, right? We're just telling Python exactly what to do. Here's this information. Let's do something with the information. Let's do with it what we need to do. OK. So adding, again, there's, we can expand this and make it a more um, useful tool. But right now, what we have is it can add two fractions and give back the right answer. Now, it gives back an answer in this particular example, like 10 over 8, which we probably would want to reduce. But that's something different, right? That's not, that's not what this does. That's not what adding, when you learned how to add fractions, you didn't, you didn't have to reduce them as you added. You reduced them after the fact. And we'll do that as well. Or we won't. You get to. Um, all right, so what else can you do with fractions? We can multiply fractions, right? So let's, we want to be able to do something like 3 over 4 times 1 over 2. So what do you think? New method in our class. Since we're overloading another operator, it's something that's going to be hidden behind the scenes. Another double underscore. What do you think we use? What do you think the name of it is here? Yeah, it turns out to be just M-U-L. All right. What does mole need? Have self. If you're going to multiply, you need you need other. Okay, but now what what could what should other be? If I have a over b times c over d, that's fine, right? You have a fraction times another fraction, that should be fine. What's the answer? Multiply a frac of two fractions. How do you do that? Multiply fractions, what do you do? You just multiply straight across. So this is going to be AC over BD. All right, but what if you multiplied a fraction times an integer? What could you do there? Yeah, you could think of this as like being over 1. And that would just be AC over B. So it doesn't have to just be just fractions, right? We can make this work pretty easily if we have fractions or if the other is an int. All right, so what are you going to have here? We're going to describe what's happening. What are we going to return? We're going to return the product of self and other, so long as other is an int or a fraction. So we're going to do both. So we're going to return a fraction. We needed that. I shouldn't have erased. Um, so what's going to happen if we have to do some checking, right? different conditions for different things happening. So if other is a fraction, we're going to do something. If other is not a fraction, 
that's an integer will do something else. If it's neither a fraction nor an integer, then we do a third thing. All right, so how do we check to see if other is a fraction? And this is instance again. So if it's a fraction, what do we return? We do it all on one line this time instead of breaking it up. And we return a fraction. What's its numerator? Numerator is the two numerators multiplied together. What's its denominator? It's the two denominators multiplied together. We could do if it's an int instead, then what? Bordering dangerously close to writing things too many times, but it'll be okay. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, in terms of, you know, you don't want to repeat yourself, but there is something different that we have to do here, so this is going to be okay. What do we return at this point? Self.numerator times what? This, so this one we have something like this. What is the other numerator? Well, it's, a, it's an int, so it doesn't have a dot, right? It doesn't have that attribute. So what was it? Yeah, it's just other. And what's the denominator? Well, what's the what? This is the numerator of the fraction. What's it's just self dot denom, right? The same denominator that it already had. And then what? We had an, an if, an elif, and we're going to have an else. What's the else? Yeah. We raise our type error that says, let me put it in there, right? Uh, we can only uh, multiply fractions with other fractions or with integers. So let's see what happens if we try 3 fourths times 1 half using our our class. And so we have x is fraction 3 comma 4, y is fraction 1 comma 2, and then let's print x times y. We get 3 over 8. That's the output, right? All right. Um, let's try 3 over 4 times 2.
Yes. Okay, hang on. Let me come and take a look.
get? Let's see which one works. Is this what do we get? This one would be six over four. This one was left hand screw over eight long. Left screw over eight long. Right screw six over four. So what was right hand over eight? Sorry. So what was right hand over eight? It was right screw over eight. Are you saying it doesn't have a piece? You're saying the right hand. So this is the situation of when you're doing the multiplication, what we're saying, well, what's happening here is we're looking at a frac fraction. So Python looks at it and sees, hey, there's a fraction. And then it sees multiplication. So it says, OK, I need to go to this method. And then it looks at this thing and says, oh, this is an integer. This is 3 over 4 times 2. OK, well, what happens? Oh, OK, if the other is an integer, then I do this. And then it creates the fraction that then when it prints it, prints 6 over, not over 8, 6 over 4. Make sense? Okay, so Python is looking at the in order. The fraction, which is the multiplication, so it goes to that method. And then it finds the appropriate piece of that method to create the next page. Is that the same issue? Yes. OK. okay. I'm not sure what's going on back there, Aaron. We'll look at it in a, in a minute. All right, let's do this then. Let's, so you had x, which was the fraction 3 over 4. Let's do 2 times x. Gives you an error. Does it give you the error that you wrote? No. no, that's not an error that you've written. All right, so what happens if you see this? So Python looks at the two and says, oh, this is an int. OK, times. All right, so Python goes to the multiplication method for ints and says, OK, let's multiply by this thing. Oh, this thing is a fraction. So let's go over to the fraction class and see what the fraction class tells us to do about this. And the fraction class doesn't tell Python what to do about this. What does the fraction class tell Python to do? Python knows what to do if the fraction is on the left. Python doesn't know what to do if the fraction is on the right. All right, so we have to add that in to tell Python what to do if the fraction is on the right. So we need a new method for telling Python what to do if the fraction is on the right. Has anyone ever dealt with this method before? OK, so any guesses as what it's going to be called? It's going to be like mol, but it's r mol. Multiplying on the right instead of regular multiplying. What do you need? You need self and other. What are we doing 
with the doc string. I'm going to leave it out. Uh, you don't leave it out. You're going to say, tell Python what to do if the fraction is on the right-hand side of the multiplication. All right, it's going to return the appropriate fraction answer, um, but when, multipli when multiplying on the right-hand side. <clears throat> All right. What are we going to do? Python looks at this, and this is the, the other thing. It's an integer at this point. And the fraction is over here. Python knows now what to do if the fraction is on the left. It doesn't know what to do if the fraction is on the right. But self, in this case, is still referring to the fraction that Python ran into. All right, so in here and in here, self is referring to the instance that, has, that, has been, um, that, that Python has noticed. So what do we do if the integer is on the left? Well, in our, the only thing we care about is if the other isn't, so, so from, from the inside of our class perspective, other is that int. But to Python, Externally, that was the thing it was looking at first, right? But now we're in, in our class. Uh, this is self. This is other. So if other is an int, what do we want to do? We want to do the multiplication in the correct order. What's that going to be? We don't have to repeat all of this. We just tell Python to do the multiplication in the, in the other order. Does that make sense? Now, it's going to turn out that there are some things that we do where this is actually different. Multiplying on the left and multiplying on the right are very different things. So sometimes mole and armo are very different. But this time, all we're doing is telling Python, OK, don't get so hung up on where things are. Just go ahead and do it in reverse order. Does that make sense? So if we have other times self, we'll just do self times other. Else do what? Raise our type error. Now, what if other, in this case, is a, is a fraction? then we never get to this because this already took care of it. Right? Then what we're thinking of now as being other really was self, so it wouldn't have mattered anywhere. So we would never have gotten to this point. Does that make sense? So this only happens if the thing on the left is not already a fraction. If it's not a fraction and it happens to be an int, we're good. If it happens to be something else, then we get a type error. Or we sometimes just do not implemented. There's, we'll talk about that later on, uh, which kicks it back to Python or kicks it back to the other uh, to the other class. But in this particular case, we raise a type error. Yes. I'm sorry. Uh, you can only multiply a fraction by an integer. Um, or again, you could say the same type of thing. You could. Uh, like you did here, the type error could be the same type error that says you can only multiply a fraction by another fraction or by an integer. Does that make sense? So what do we have? We have multiplication, whether it's on the left or on the right. And we can add. Right now, 
how can we add? Right now, we can only add two fractions. What do you really want to be able to do? You want to modify that to also be able to add a fraction and an integer. Also, whichever side it's on. So what do you think happens there? What are we going to need? R add, right, for adding if the thing is on the right-hand side rather than on the left-hand side. What about subtraction? We jumped over subtraction. We went to addition and went straight to multiplication. What about subtraction? What did A over B minus C over D? What do you think? This is, a, this is our fraction x, and this is our fraction y. How would we do x minus y? So you think do all this except put minus right here instead of plus? What we did with add, get a common denominator, subtract instead of add. Well, we could. But what else could we do? x minus y is x plus negative 1 times y, isn't it? And if this is self and this is other, We could do just return self plus negative 1 times other. Does that make sense? So instead of repeating all of this, let's use all of that and all of that and make this a one-line method. What do you think the subtraction method is called? Sub, right? Underscore, underscore, sub, underscore, underscore. So let's see if we can write that method. And make it in, I mean, other than the doc string, which is longer than the, than the method itself, it's a one line method. Let's see if we can make that one work out. And then, of course, you want to test it and make sure it does what it's supposed to do.
this what should say three fourths minus a half be? Is two eighths. Okay. What does three fourths minus one give? Based on what we have, it should give us this. Does that work? What about 1 minus 3 fourths? That doesn't work. What are you going to need to do? Do the right side. Yeah, do the right side, right? So R sub. You're going to need to do that. Yes? So this is self minus other is what we have. Okay, so what do we want to return? We want to return self plus. We don't normally write negative like that, do we? We don't normally put negative one times something to be. What would, we, what would we like to be able to do? We'd like to be able to do something like. We'd like to be able to do something like that, just like negative x, right? X equals negative x instead of negative one times x. Can we do that? What happens if we do next slide here? What happens if we so we have x is fraction three comma four? We had y it was whatever it was. Uh, let's see. We had, let's try this. Let's see what happens if we do that. Get a type error. Is it a type error that we wrote? No. Python is not liking this. So what do we do instead? What do you think we have to do? Sorry? Yeah, we're going to have to tell Python what to do in that situation. So what are we going to have? We're going to have to write something. negative. So we're going to return the negative of a fraction, which is going to be what? Negative 1 times self. All right? So we have
All right, so what happens? There's all kinds of things we can do to make things easier, to make things work the way we want them to work. We can add, uh, overload all these different kinds of operators to make things look the way we want it to, to look, uh, make it easy to work with, and make fractions easy to calculate. Uh, so far, we don't have anything that gives the actual value of the fraction. Can we get the value of the fraction? What would it take to, to, to turn something into a value? So we'll need a new we'll need a new a new method for that. But what do we do to get to see the value? What kind of what kind of type what kind of data type would that be that would have the actual value of the fraction? A float, right? So we need to turn this into a float. So we need to be able to take a fraction, take a self, and turn it into a float. What do you think that method would be called? Float, right? But it's underscore underscore float, so that it's not a, a you know you don't call this by doing something dot float. You do float that thing, and it'll change it into a float. Make sense? Uh, what if you had two fractions and you wanted to see if they were the same? So I had a fraction uh, x, and I had a fraction y. And I want to see if those two fractions have the same values. What could we do? We had fraction AB. We had fraction CD that we had created at some point. We created some fraction. We created a different fraction somewhere else. We don't know what we typed in for A and B and C and D because they were part of a calculation or something. And we want to see if they're the same fraction now for the same values. What can we? Okay, so we could do a calculation, but what are we trying to do? At I mean, we will do a calculation, but what are we trying to do at this point? We're trying to check to see whether they're equal, right? So we want to be able to check to see whether they're equal. And so our method, what do you think? It's just EQ, right? So it's equal, but just EQ. Uh, so we can check to see if they're equal. So how do we check? We could do um, lots of different ways to check to see if the two fractions are equal. We could check to see if A and C are the same number, and then B and D are the same number. So that's to see if they have the actual same numerator and denominator. Or we could do the uh, calculation in terms of, of a divided by B and C divided by D. So we can do the float values of each of them to see if they're the same. We could do some kind of creating a reducing method to reduce to see what happens, uh, which is bonus on the lab, right? Being able to reduce a fraction, take a fraction and reduce it to its lowest, uh, to its lowest terms. Uh, no, so so reduce is not using a built-in. Um, other symbol. So reduce would just be reduce. And it would be for self. And then when you call it, you would call it by doing something like x dot reduce. So that would be a method that you would call the way you've called other methods uh, in the past. So we're not overloading something that's already built in at this point. Uh, we are creating something new. So that would be called in a different way. Make sense? All right, so what do we have in this lab? We've done a lot of it together, but there's a lot more left. right? If you look at the lab itself, there's still a lot of pieces. Even some of the things that we've done, we skipped over parts of them, so you go back and fill in some, some missing pieces. Um, make this a robust class for dealing with fractions. What about dividing a fraction, two fractions? What do you do to divide a fraction? If I had A over B, and I wanted to divide by C over D, what do I do? Yeah, we turn this into a multiplication problem. 
And that way we don't have to rewrite all the pieces. We just turn it into that kind of problem. And change other, right? So change the role of the numerator and the denominator um, in, in other and return this value instead. So it won't be long right, to, to do the division. It won't be a long method. So once we've built the first primary pieces, the add and multiply, then everything else is a lot easier. Um, subtraction and division, because they're just modifications of that. So we don't rewrite all the pieces. We use what we've already done. What else could we do? Whatever else you can imagine that you can do with fractions, right? We can add in lots and lots of pieces um, to do things uh, with this. But the lab only asks for uh, a, few, a, few, a few of these kinds of pieces. All right? Um, so are there any questions about this? Yes. OK, now we'll look at that in just a second then. Before, so at, let's see, um, it's always, uh, right now, this lab and the next assignment are going to be due five minutes before we meet again. Um, so right, before, we, before we meet again. But you can ask questions. Um, let me know at any time.